these lines did not prepare us for reality. Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome to Ms. Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 romantic movie lines that ruined our expectations for love. The first time we met, we hated each other. No, you didn't hate me, I hated you. The second time we met, you didn't even remember me. I did too, I remembered you. That means we're going over romantic quotes from film that gave us false and or unrealistically high expectations for what love entails. Number 10. No, I like you very much, just as you are. Bridget Jones's Diary. Bridget Jones is a tremendously relatable character because she's, to put it mildly, an absolute mess. Her relationship with Mark Darcy gets off on the wrong foot, probably because she puts hers in her mouth so frequently. Though he allows his own preconceptions to get in the way as well. The movie is based on Pride and Prejudice, after all. And you really needn't bother. I already feel like an idiot most of the time anyway. With or without a fireman's pole. Still, Mark lets Bridget know that he likes her, for all her faults, just as she is. I like you. Very much. Uh, apart from the smoking, and the drinking, and the vulgar mother, and the verbal diarrhea. No, I like you very much. Just as you are. Sadly, real life rarely works out so well. It takes a lot of searching to find someone who can love you for your quirks. And they're probably not gonna look like Colin Firth. Just as you are. Well, oh, not thinner, not cleverer, not with slightly bigger breasts, and slightly smaller nose. Number 9. Kiss me. Kiss me as if it were the last time. Casablanca. But what about us? We'll always have Paris. This classic of cinema has some of the most romantic lines of all time. And while we were tempted to discuss we'll always have Paris or here's looking at you kid, we went with this one instead. In Paris, as the Nazis are invading, Ilsa, being struck with how uncertain her future with Rick is, tells him she loves him and asks him to kiss her as if it were the last time. Kiss me. Kiss if it were the last time. Real love is far less likely to have as many opportunities for these kind of last chance romantic lines. And while kissing someone like it's the last time might lead to a good kiss, it could just as easily lead to a desperate and unsatisfying one. When I said I would never leave you. And you never will. Number eight, love means never having to say you're sorry. Love story. Hey, if you're so convinced I'm a loser, why did you bulldoze me into buying you coffee? I like your body. Oh, we can hear your eyes rolling. After young lovers Oliver and Jenny have an argument about Oliver making amends with his father and he snaps at her, Jenny runs off. Let's get the hell out of my life! When Oliver returns home to find her waiting on the porch, he apologizes. To which she replies that love means never having to say you're sorry. As anyone who has ever been in love or even in a relationship will tell you, apologies are absolutely essential. Being in love does not equate to instant forgiveness. And anyone who tells you otherwise has probably never been in love or is in a toxic relationship. I'm sorry. Don't. Love means never having to say you're sorry. Number seven, I'm scared of everything. Dirty dancing. Because what's she doing here? She came with me. She's with me. I carried a watermelon. Another famously influential romance film, Dirty Dancing follows Francis, Baby Houseman, and Johnny Castle as they fall in love through intimate dancing. But their lives aren't all sexy dance sequences. Yo, yo. Yes, Mickey. How you call your lover boy? Come here, lover boy. Baby is forced to admit to her father that she used money she got from him to help a friend get a botched abortion. Johnny tells Baby that he admires her for telling him this, but she exclaims that she was scared of that and almost everything else. And most of all, that she won't feel the same way she does when she's with him during the rest of her whole life. As romantic as the sentiment is, real love usually isn't composed of grand, dramatic declarations like this. Me, hey, I'm scared of everything. I'm scared of what I saw. I'm scared of what I did, of who I am. And most of all, I'm scared of walking out of this room and never feeling the rest of my whole life the way I feel when I'm with you. Number six, always. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, part two. Severus Snape may be a professor at Hogwarts and a spy in the Dark Lord Voldemort's organization, but he is still needlessly cruel to his students, particularly Harry Potter. You've been raising him like a pig for slaughter. Don't tell me now that you've grown to care for the boy. 
However, in the final Harry Potter movie, we learn why Snape hates Harry so much. He loved Harry's mother and hated that his father ended up with her instead of him. If you truly loved her, no one can know. While the revelation that Snape has carried a torch for Lily Potter for so long is touching, it still doesn't excuse what a jerk he's been to her son, even if he has protected and helped him behind the scenes. Lily. After all this time. Always. The lesson here is that love doesn't automatically redeem someone. Look at me. You have your mother's eyes. Number five, you want the rest of your life to start as soon as possible, when Harry met Sally. This iconic romantic comedy sees Harry and Sally dance around one another for years, becoming friends in spite of some initial animosity. An apparent one-night stand causes some distance between them, but on New Year's Eve, Harry arrives at a party Sally's attending to declare all the things he loves about her. I came here tonight because when you realize you want to spend the rest of your life with somebody, you want the rest of your life to start as soon as possible. He tells her that it's not just the occasion, but that he wants to spend the rest of his life with her, and he wants the rest of his life to start as soon as possible. That is just like you, Harry. You say things like that and you make it impossible for me to hate you. And I hate you, Harry. I really hate you. Not everyone is going to propose or declare their love in such a romantic or clever way. We were friends for a long time. And then we weren't. And then we fell in love. Of course we want what Harry and Sally are having, but life and love don't take such specific orders. I'll have what she's having. Number four, You Complete Me and You Had Me at Hello, Jerry Maguire. The title character is a passionate sports agent who decides to start his own agency after being fired. I will go with you. Dorothy Boyd, thank you. He brings along Dorothy, whom he eventually marries. Sadly, the two of them separate, and when Jerry realizes his professional success feels hollow, he returns home to win Dorothy back. Upon arrival, he delivers an emotional speech about how important she is to him, telling her that she completes him, to which she replies that he had her at hello. Shut up. Just shut up. You had me at hello. As iconic and romantic as both these lines are, when it comes to real love, they aren't the best words to follow. Looking to someone else to complete your life can lead to unhealthy dependence, while accepting someone's apology before they've even made it is rarely a good idea. I love you. You complete me. Number three, I'll never let go, Titanic. Winning that ticket, Rose, was the best thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> Mm. It brought me to you. This film, based on the real, tragically fated ship, follows the romance that blooms between working class Jack and upper class Rose. Their love is as doomed as the Titanic, though, as they're forced into the freezing water. As romantic as the you jump, I jump line is, we're going with a moment a little later. You jump, I jump, right? When Rose believes they're going to die, Jack encourages her to survive no matter what, urging her to never let go of the promise she makes to live. Rose replies that she'll never let go, though it's clear that she also means her love for him. Titanic depicts an extraordinary love in extraordinary circumstances. In reality, not everyone can find someone they'll love long after they're gone. Never let go. I will never let go, Jack. Number two, I hate the way I don't hate you. 10 things I hate about you. Hey there, girlie. How you doing? Sweating like a pig, actually, in yourself. Now there's a way to get a guy's attention, huh? 10 Things I Hate About You takes its title from this moment, which is considerably more than a single line. Kat Stratford is an independent teenager who falls for Patrick Verona, who, despite initially being paid to date her, also falls for her. Although Kat finding out about this leads to heartbreak, she does tell him she still loves him in the form of the titular poem. I hate the way you talk to me and the way you cut your hair. I hate the way you drive my car. I hate it when you stare. However, in real life, people rarely declare their love in verse anymore. It's just not in vogue and poetry is harder than it seems. 
And secondly, if you screw up as badly as Patrick does, you probably shouldn't expect the person you've hurt to write romantic poetry about you. I hate it when you make me laugh, even worse when you make me cry. I hate it when you're not around and the fact that you didn't call. But mostly I hate the way I don't hate you. Not even close, not even a little bit, not even at all. Has anyone ever said anything remotely like any of these to you? So many expectations not met. Mm. Anyway, our number one is from the adaptation of a classic piece of literature, and it's not Shakespeare. So think on that while we run through some honorable mentions, and then we'll see which romantic movie line ruined romance for us the most. Oh, it's not gonna be easy. It's gonna be really hard. And we're gonna have to work at this every day, but I wanna do that because I want you. I want all of you forever. You and me, every day. <laughs> I wish I knew how to quit you. Then why don't you? I love you, Molly. I've always loved you. Ditto. Did my heart love till now? Forswear in sight. For I ne'er saw true beauty till this night. Pocahontas, look at me. I'd rather die tomorrow than live a hundred years without knowing you. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, you have bewitched me body and soul, pride and prejudice. You mean to frighten me, Mr. Darcy, by coming in all your state to hear me? But I won't be alarmed, even if your sister does play so well. I am well enough acquainted with you, Miss Elizabeth, to know that I cannot alarm you, even should I wish it. This 2005 adaptation of Jane Austen's famous novel is a fairly good translation of the book to the screen, but it does add some things, including this romantic line. You have bewitched me, body and soul, and I love, and love, I love you. I never wish to be parted from you from this day on. Although both Mr. Darcy and Elizabeth Bennet struggle to overcome their preconceptions about each other, Elizabeth takes a little longer to see Darcy for who he is. When he approaches her near her family's home near the movie's end, after she has a confrontation with his aunt, Darcy makes a beautiful speech, in which he reaffirms his love for her, the rice over, and tells her that he never wants to be apart from her. This is just so romantic, but it's sadly also an example of something that's very unlikely to be said to you by someone you love. No, you may only call me Mrs. Darcy when you are completely and perfectly and incandescently happy. Oh my God, you guys, I'm ruined, ruined. I think my favorite movie line, favorite's probably not the right word, but the movie line that ruined romance for me the most is from You've Got Mail. It's all this nothing means more to me than so many somethings. That's a good one, but anyway. Um, which movie line ruined romance for you the most? Let us know in the comments or come tell me on Twitter or Instagram and I'll try to make you feel better and you'll try to make me feel better. Anyway, let us know what you think. Be sure to like and subscribe and please watch this other video. I love you guys.